sometimes three is more than a crowd. It can be a recipe for disaster, especially when it is two teenage girls locked in a vicious tug of war over one boy. It started as something that's not unfamiliar these days. A teenage rivalry that escalated from girlfriend gossip to internet insults and finally to a street side showdown. But as it grew, it changed into something dark and dangerous. In fact, it took just five seconds for the story of Mean Girls to become a sordid tale of murder. For that, Ashley Banfield. A perfect storm, that's how many described it. Two teenage girls fall hard for the same guy. Love, jealousy, and anger would create a volatile mix that would make them seemingly lose their minds. And on an April night, they would meet for just five seconds, five seconds that would alter the course of their lives forever. Just a few miles from these white sand beaches and clear gulf waters, Sarah Ludeman grew up in a working class neighborhood in Pinellas Park, Florida. Her family licensed these pictures to ABC News. She was a late bloomer when it came to boys, until when, at age 18, she walked into this restaurant and met Josh Camacho. We would go to Chick-fil-A all the time. He poked his head out of the back because he was working in the back, and um, he just kind of like winked at her, and she wanted to know him. One wink. One wink. That was it. <laughs> When Josh came into the picture, she was very excited, always giddy around him, always smiling. All of a sudden, the naive and bookish straight-A student had a new fascination, a boy who paid attention and called her pretty. Most people have their first love when they're younger. You know, Sarah was 18. She loved him, really, really loved him. But pictures on her cell phone showed Sarah's boyfriend had a dark side, a tough guy flexing his muscles, waving a gun, boasting his name tattooed across his back. He was edgy and dangerous, qualities that attracted the clean-cut Sarah. What'd you think of the photos? Oh, they're stupid. What did Sarah think of the photos? She liked it. I guess she thought it was attractive, you know? The bad boy. Yeah. From the get-go, Sarah's parents weren't impressed. There was always something about him that kept you thinking, was he good, was he bad? Turns out they had a reason to be suspicious. Josh was dating another girl, Rachel Wade, at the same time. Rachel had many similarities to Sarah. She grew up in the same town and, like Sarah, loved the beach and wanted to be a veterinarian. But Rachel was streetwise. At 19, she had dropped out of school. She had a job, her own apartment, and more experience with boys. I think that attracts a lot of girls, a bad boy and living on the edge or whatever he was going for. I think that could have attracted her. Josh kept each relationship a secret from the other, but family and friends of both girls told us they began to see them change, acting and dressing differently. Josh insisted the girls wear long pants despite Florida's oppressive heat. He didn't want other guys looking. If Rachel was wearing shorts, he was very unhappy with her and wanted her to wear long pants. Friends of both girls went even further, saying Josh dictated who they could and could not see. I would see her and she didn't look like Sarah, she didn't dress like Sarah. Even parts of her didn't act like Sarah anymore. I brought Sarah up to be a strong-willed woman, and it was sad to see her be a tiny, tiny person. Like someone had control over her, power over her. When Josh said do it, Sarah did it. Sarah's parents grew even more concerned when they noticed bruises on their daughter. I've asked her about the black and blues on her arms and that. They were just fooling around and on the couch. That's play fighting, yeah. you know, Mom, that's play fighting. Do you think that he was abusive to her? Now that we know now, yes. And for Rachel, it was the same thing. She even told friends that Josh threatened her with a gun. He held the gun out and said, you'll never leave me, you'll never leave me, basically implying that he would shoot her if she did. If he said something to, you know, Rachel, that's what she had to do. He's very controlling. It didn't take long before Rachel and Sarah found out about each other. Josh brushed it off, calling them friends with benefits. What Josh meant by friends with benefits is hooking up with someone, but you're not dating them. Basically, you want to be with other people. 
We've all told Rachel to get out of the re relationship with Josh plenty of times, but he just had this kind of hold on her. Sarah's friends also told her to end the relationship. She had lost 30 pounds and was losing herself in Josh. She couldn't help it. You know, she wasn't willing to let him go. No matter who tried. Everybody tried. Did you ever try to dissuade her from seeing him? Yeah, I tried to get her to see the light. You know, you're making a decision here to go out with this young man. You've never been with a boy before. And did she? No. No matter what you said, she was going to do what she wanted to do. Then the tipping point. Sarah posted this simple photo on MySpace, a trip to New York with her very first love, Josh. Obviously, to make sure Rachel saw them, she messaged her and said, Oh, how do you like my new pictures? That's with my man, not yours. That's like someone, you know, just like stepping on your heart, ripping it out of your chest and stepping on it. It was war. Rachel explodes, dialing Sarah's phone and leaving this angry voicemail. What the f do you have that's going for you that Josh wants you over me for? I got a job, have my own place, not to mention that I look probably 10 times better than you. Teenage girls are not nice. You're with the one thing that I care about. So keep going, Sarah. Play your game, because I'm going to teach you how to grow up real quick. She didn't understand why this girl was just so invested in making her life miserable. The taunting went back and forth for months. On MySpace, text messages and voicemail, the technology made it all too easy to lash out, but also made it worse. And it wasn't just virtual. Straight-A Sarah took the fight offline, harassing Rachel at work. Sarah would come in and purposely ask to sit in her section so they could mess with her. You know, they could trip her while she was carrying beer and complain about her and say, oh, this girl's, you know, she spit in our food. And Rachel was no angel either. Was Sarah scared of Rachel? She said it to me multiple times, that she's crazy. It was almost as if she was stalking her about Josh. Josh seemed to enjoy the two teenagers vying for his affection. Friends from both camps say he even encouraged the girls to go to battle for him. Josh would say, well, if you want to be with me, then you'll, argue, like, you'll fight with her for me. And when he broke off a date with Rachel for the straight-laced Sarah, Josh set off a firestorm. Texts and threats began to fly between the girls that scared even the streetwise Rachel. Alone, she called her close friend Javier to ask for a place to hide. She's crying. She said, Sarah and um, a few friends are going to beat her up. So I told her to come over. Fearing Sarah was coming to get her, Rachel hurries from her apartment, but stops in the kitchen and makes a fateful decision. She grabs a knife. Did you know that Rachel had brought a knife to your house? Yes. You know, she was afraid that they were going to, you know, show up and she, was, she had no way to defend herself. But the drama continued at Javier's house. Heated phone calls between Sarah, the high school senior, and Rachel, the high school dropout, all about Josh. Rachel would pace up and down the street and just on the phone and arguing and leave me alone. But Sarah's friends say she too had had enough that night. Sarah couldn't escape this trap that it seemed like she was in. I mean, that night, I think she just wanted it to be over. And after months of drama, it was on. Sarah gets wind that Rachel is at Javier's house and peels out in her parents' minivan to confront her face to face for the very first time. And you hear a car screeching around the corner. If she would have gone any faster, I mean, she could have tipped that van. By the time we, we realized what was going on, Sarah had already jumped out of the car, grabbed Rachel's hair. She was punching. Rachel's arms were flying everywhere. 